Hi my dear friends, today we will discuss non-infectious corneal ulcers. By definition, corneal ulcers are defects in the corneal epithelium with or without stromal infiltration. It includes two types, infectious ulcerative keratitis and non-infectious ulcerative keratitis. According to etiology, we can classify ulcerative keratitis into two types, non-infectious caused by systemic autoimmune diseases and local inflammatory conditions or caused by local toxic effect of drug. While in infectious keratitis, it can caused by many microorganisms including bacteria and fungi, viruses and protozoa like a cancer amoeba. Non-infectious ulcerative keratitis causes it include two types of causes local causes and systemic causes. Local causes which causes pancreatic marginal keratitis like immune reaction against staphylococci, streptococci and the hypersensitivity to other medications. Peripheral keratitis associated with bilirubin. In systemic causes it can include as a general manifestation of systemic autoimmune mediated diseases. Most commonly like rheumatoid arthritis Wagner granulomatosis and polyarthritis nodosa. We can differentiate by infectious and non-infectious keratitis by the following. In infectious keratitis, there is a pain, while in non-infectious keratitis, usually there is no pain. In infectious keratitis, you will find discharge, while in non-infectious keratitis, you will not find a discharge. In infectious keratitis, anterior chamber reaction usually present, while in non-infectious keratitis, anterior chamber reaction usually absent. The alteration in infectious keratitis usually central, while in non-infectious keratitis, it is mostly peripheral. As regards the history of trauma, in infectious keratitis, there is a positive history of trauma, especially trauma of plant origin, as in case of fungal keratitis, while in non-infectious keratitis, history of trauma usually absent. Important type of non-infectious corneal ulcerations include marginal keratitis, morning ulcer, tear marginal degeneration, ulceration associated with systemic autoimmune diseases, dealing, and other types including flectinulosis. Marginal keratitis Marginal keratitis caused by hypersensitivity action against staphylococcal exotoxins and cell wall proteins with the position of antigen and the body immunocomplexes in peripheral cornea, leading to corneal ulceration. Lesions usually are culture negative, but staph aureus can be isolated from the lead margin due to blepharitis. Signs and symptoms of marginal keratitis. Usually, in these patients, you will find chronic blepharitis. In cornea, you will find sub epithelial marginal infiltrates separated from the limbus by a clear zone. Conjunctival injection. These marginal infiltrates will coalesce and circumferentially spread. Little or no anterior chamber reaction. Usually, resolution occurs in one to four weeks. Occasionally, there is a residual superficial scarring. In these photos, we can notice that there is an area of peripheral corneal marginal keratitis with peripheral uh, conjunctival injection at the limbus and here we can see the area of sub epithelial marginal infiltrates also in this photo there is a marginal sub epithelial corneal infiltrate together with conjunctival inflammation Treatment of marginal keratitis include weak topical steroid which can be combined with topical antibiotic treatment on blepharitis mainly to eliminate the inducing factor which is staph extoxins. This treatment can be done by tetracycline orally and in cases of children and breastfeeding and pregnancy, tetracycline is contraindicated so we can use erythromycin. More in the ulcer. It is a rare autoimmune disease. It is characterized by progressive peripheral ulcer with lymphitis. This peripheral ulcer will circumferentially spread with stromal involvement. Usually, moron ulcers associated with vascularization involving the bit of the ulcer up to its leading edge, but not beyond. Later, this ulcer extends to the center. Risk factors for moron ulcer include coronary surgery, previous trauma, and infection.
like this photo we can notice area of peripheral ulceration which extend from the periphery to the center like this photo the ulceration is uh, extensive and associated with uh, lymphitis this ulcer will pass through healing stage and circumferential spread stage this ulcer will show circumferential spread like this photo extend from the periphery to the center and lastly healing by corneal opacification with vascularization complications the main complication is severe astigmatism due to extensive vascularization and fibrosis. Perforation can occur following a minor trauma at the area of thin cornea. And lastly, second bacterial infection can occur on top of these ulcers. Management The main management include topical treatment like topical steroids, cyclosporins, which take weeks to show significant effect. We can use artificial tears and lubricants and Topical collagenase inhibitor like a style cysteine. We can use bandage contact lens to allow healing. Conjunctival resection, as in this photo. The aim of conjunctival resection here to reduce the immune stress on the peripheral cornea. We can use systemic immunosuppression by systemic immunosuppressive drug. And lastly, we can use systemic collagenase inhibitors such as doxycycline. Surgical treatment can include lamella keratoplasty for area of thinning, keratoepithelioplasty, which uh, done by uh, using donor cornea with its, its epithelium after removing the epithelium from the recipient cornea. This allow donor cornea to allow the proliferation of its epithelium to the recipient cornea from the donor cornea. And lastly, conjunctival flap and batch grafts. Terium marginal degeneration. It is an, an idiopathic thinning of the peripheral cornea. It uh, occurs in young adult to elderly patient. It is an uncommon condition affecting 75% of cases in males and usually bilateral. Symptoms. It may be asymptomatic. Gradual visual deterioration can occur due to stigmatism. A few patients experience episodic pain and inflammation. Signs. It is caused by a slowly progressive non-inflammatory unilateral, asymmetric, or bilateral peripheral corneal thinning, which is associated with corneal neovascularization, opacification, and lipid deposition, as in this photo. We can notice there is an area of peripheral corneal thinning, like here. It may be associated with vascularization and healing opacification and lipid deposition at the margins of this area of thinning. Perforation in tear marginal degeneration is rare, but may be spontaneous or follow plant trauma. So, pseudotrigium sometimes develop here. Usually, the pseudotrigium can develop in this area of thinning. Also, in this picture, we can notice area of peripheral thinning and the lipid deposition, also like here with pseudotrigium formation. Management. One of the management is using safety spectacles if thinning is significant. The second line using contact lenses for stigmatism. It may be scleral or soft lenses with rigid gas malleable character. Surgery done by crescentric excision of the gutter with lamellar or full thickness corneoscleral patch graft transplantation like in this photo. The area of thinning is removed by crescentric excision with lamella of full thickness corneoscleral patch graft transplantation. Peripheral ulcerative keratitis associated with systemic autoimmune diseases. Destructive inflammation of the peripheral cornea associated with corneal epithelial sloughing and keratolysis. The mechanism of this in destructive inflammation include immunocomplex deposition in the peripheral cornea and the inner and conjunctival capillary occlusion with secondary cytokine release and inflammatory cell recruitment and upregulation of collagenases and reduced activity of the inhibitors. Uh, we can summarize this by that uh, the systemic inflammatory condition based in this immunomediated disease associated with uh, local inflammatory action by deposition of immunocomplexes and release of inflammatory mediation at the cornea, at the peripheral cornea, which will lead to peripheral corneal ulceration.
Systemic association. The most common one is rheumatoid arthritis. Peripheral arthritis of arthritis in this condition is bilateral in 30% of cases and tends to occur in advanced rheumatoid arthritis. The second is vaginal granulomatosis, which is the second most common. In contrast to rheumatoid arthritis, ocular complication are the initial presentation in 50% of cases. Other conditions include polyarthritis nodosa, elapsing polychondritis, systemic lobus rheumatosis, charg uh, strauss disease, microscopic polyangitis, inflammatory bowel disease. Clinically, we will find crescentic peripheral ulceration, like in this photo. The second is contact lens cornea, when ulceration extends to involve 360 degree of the peripheral cornea, making the cornea what is called contact lens cornea. This area of thinning can show spontaneous perforation and ice prolapse, like in this photo, or even with a very minor trauma. Also, we can see lumbitis, episcleritis, and escleritis, like this photo, which can show area of lumbitis. Peripheral corneal involvement in rheumatoid arthritis. Corneal involvement in rheumatoid arthritis can include two forms without inflammation and with inflammation. Without inflammation, like in this photo, it is chronic and asymptomatic with circumferential thinning with intact epithelium, which was called contact lens cornea with eye quiet. While with inflammation, the eye is not quiet with severe cilia injection and acute and painful ulceration with circumferential ulceration and infiltration. Management. Principally, the management should be directed to the causative disease with systemic immunosuppression in collaboration with rheumatologists. Topical treatment include artificial tears should be mostly preservative free to reduce the effect of preservatives on the corneal healing. Antibiotics as flexes against infection. Steroids may worsen thinning, so generally should be avoided. Systemic treatment include steroids with Pulsed intravenous administration are used to control the acute disease with immunosuppressive therapy and the biological blockers for long term management and tetracycline for its anti collagenase effect. Dillon, it is a localized corneal disturbance associated with drying of the focal area, usually associated with any elevated lesion like bengicoli or large subconjunctival hemorrhage that impairs physiological lubrication. So, as in this photo, we can notice that dealing caused by any area of corneal ulceration due to dry, dry eye or drying of this area locally due to nearby elevated lesion, like this photo or like this photo. This condition can be treated by lubrication and elimination of the cause. Flectinulosis. It is uncommon unilateral typically affect the children. It associates with severe photophobia, like I mentioned, peripheral spasm. It is caused mainly by delayed hypersensitivity reaction to staphylococcal antigen. In developing countries, the majority are associated with tuberculosis or helminthing infestation. It includes two types conjunctival flectin and corneal flectin. In conjunctival flectin, it is a small pinkish white. Nodule like this photo near the limbus, usually transient and dissolve spontaneously. While in corneal flectin, the, the condition starts at the limbus and dissolves spontaneously or extends into the cornea. Treatment include topical steroids and eliminating of the cause. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy my presentation. Thank you.